one Monday morning, there she was, sitting in the third row in a bright red organdy dress and red ribbons and smelling of baby powder. She was sharing a desk with Poverty and Eric and Vina and Harry. The desk was only made for four, but Miss put her there because Parbati and Eric and Vina and Harry were all very small and didn't quite fill up the bench. But there was Millicent sitting in the middle with her elbow sprawled on the desk on either side of her and her skirt spread out on the bench so that Parbati and Eric were squeezed together at one end of the bench and Vina and Harry looked as though they were about to fall off the other end. Millicent sat like a queen in the middle. The other four sat crammed for the whole morning, barely able to write, but not daring to complain. For Millicent and her red organdy dress filled them with awe. But by mid-afternoon, Millicent had taken over so much of the bench that Harry really fell off his end. All we heard was a little crash because Harry was not very big. In fact, we called him Mosquito. We heard a crash and a small shriek, and Harry was sitting in the aisle ready to burst with anger. Everybody laughed. The class was in uproar. Miss was laughing helplessly too. But then, she made her face stern again and tapped the ruler on the table. Harry picked himself up and stayed standing in the aisle, looking at Millicent in such a way that if looks could kill, Millicent would have dropped down dead in her red organdy dress. Millicent, you will sit at the end, said Miss. Nope, said Millicent, and she folded her arms, pouted her mouth, and stayed where she was. Everybody was shocked. This girl must be crazy. We stopped all our laughter and stared in amazement. Even Harry forgot to be angry and stared dumbfounded at Millicent, then at Miss, from one to the other. There was complete silence. We were a little excited, waiting to see what would happen next, looking at Miss's face. Come out here, ma'am, said Miss. Millicent still sat with her arms tightly folded and her mouth pushed far out like a pig snout. Then Miss started to get up, her chair grated on the floor. Our hearts beat faster. This crazy girl didn't know Miss. She wasn't afraid of her in her organdy dress. She would put the rule on her, organdy dress or no organdy dress. But when Millicent saw that Miss was going to come for her, she suddenly sprang up and pushed Vina off the bench to get out. Vina didn't fall right down, but she hit her elbow on the edge of the desk and that made her so angry that she flew at Millicent and landed her a cough right in the middle of her chest. Miss rushed down the aisle and parted them. Millicent was crying loudly, saying she was going to tell her Auntie June and she didn't like this old dirty country school and her father was going to come and take her back to Belmont. Miss clapped her hands sharply. Get your spelling books. Everybody outside. No noise. And you, ma'am. If you make one more sound, you will sit down right here by yourself. The rest of us were nearly outside already. Millicent stood sniffling still, rather bewildered at the sight of the classroom emptying around her. Then she wiped her nose and followed.